good day, everybody. It's assessment day. My name is Tutuzi Lekupega. Welcome to Life Sciences, grade 11. So we are continuing with our preparation, guys. Please, please do the assessment and then email it to me when you're done. Let's, uh, where is it? Let me go show you my email address. I, you signed up on the website, right? So you can download the paper. Here's my email address. Ah, oh, there's no email address. Let me type it for you in the chat box. Or let me write it on the screen. Yeah. So that you can share it with me when you are done. Please do share it with me when you are done. So that I can ask. Uh, it's easier. Just write and I'll do the marking. Ne? Then in class together, we will do uh, the memorandum tomorrow. See, I'm making your lives easier. So just submit to me so that I can mark. And then we will do a memo tomorrow in class. So this is my email address. I'm sorry, I'm writing it slowly. 048gmail. At gmail dot com. There's my email address for all of you who submit. Even the ones who watch our classes on YouTube and not necessarily participate in class, please do submit as well. Okay, now we are continuing. Remember, we had started with the uh, multiple choice yesterday. Today, question 1.2, you give the correct biological term. It's very clear. It's asking for a biological term, guys. So there might be other names associated with that particular thing. But if it's not the biological term, do not give me that name. Give the biological term. I hope I'm clear with that. But yeah, if you are in a case where you really, really don't know and you only know the common name that... <laughs> Write it, but please, please. That's this. This is very important, actually. Even in your exams and final exams, it's it's a mark. You see, it's nine times one, meaning it's one mark for each question. So this means if you do not give us the biological term, you lose out a mark for that question. So please, please, please uh, adhere to the instructions. And again, it's strictly saying only uh, give the question number and the, the name. So it's 1.2.1 and you write the answer. So no need to repeat the question again. So 1.2.1, the type of respiration that occurs in the presence of oxygen. What is that respiration? Yeah, off to a great start. It's aerobic respiration. Thank you, Wuhle. It depends on the presence of oxygen. And then 1.2.2, the rhythmical contractions of the muscles of the alimentary canal causing food to move along the gut. What is that? Causes food to move along the gut. Peristalsis. <laughs> yeah, with you, I know you are so smart, yes. Like I can see you getting distinctions already. And then question three, the Digestive juice, which has no enzymes. Uh, if I can give you a clue, it's, 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 its color is green. It's bile. Yep. 1.2.4, organisms consisting of a cell or cells which, in which the genetic material is contained within a distinct nucleus. Great. The other one doesn't have a distinct nucleus, so the, the, the genetic material is just in the cytoplasm, right? Which are the prokaryotes. Eukaryotes, you find the genetic material in the distinct nucleus. And then 1.2.5, a disease causing organism. Disease causing organism. Hi, Kuzuayo. Where is Kuzai? Hello, Kuzai. Welcome. Welcome. <laughs> so a disease causing organism is called a pathogen. Listen, guys, I, I honestly didn't even need to prepare the answers here because Bukhe is giving it to me. 
All of them are so correct. Thank you, Bushi. And then question 1.2.6. A method of asexual reproduction where unicellular organisms simply split into two. Okay, Bushi, are you just prepared or you are just that smart? Naturally, Wena. There we go again, it's binary fusion. <laughs> and then question seven, the microorganism that causes malaria. What is that microorganism? Plasmodium. <laughs> I'm so impressed with you. You don't understand. Question 1.2.8, a part of the alimentary canal that serves as a passage for both air and food. Pharynx. And then question nine, a plant with no true roots, stems and leaves. Wow, okay, wow. <laughs> they're they're 100% to push it. <laughs> Congratulations, thank you. And then question 1.3, indicate whether each of the statements in column one applies to A only, B only, both A and B or none. So you have four options. It's either your answer is A only or it's B only or it's both A and B or it's none. Four. So it can be both guys. If it's A and B, they are clear. Write both A and B. You write exactly as you are given here. If it's A, write A only. If it's B, write B only. Is that clear? So question 1.3.1. I think uh, Kuzo is settled in nicely now. He can participate. Uh, the product of final digestion in the gut. When there's the final digestion in the gut, what are the products, guys? Digestion in the gut, what are the products there of final digestion in the gut? None. The products of final digestion in the gut will then be waste, and you need proteins and lipids, right? Question 1.3.2 Animals without backbones. Have you ever heard people trying to insult a, and say, hey, Rena, Rena, you don't have a, a big bowl. <laughs> <laughs> so they, they'd be calling you a, an invertebrate. The answer is A only. If they say you don't have a big bowl, they're saying you're an invertebrate. So you can take it a notch up and just say, Rena, you're an invertebrate. Ne? Okay, I'm not encouraging it, but just saying. And then question 1.3.3, a biological agent that can only reproduce inside the cell of a living organism. Only inside the cell of a living organism. What is that biological agent? It is a, <laughs> it is a virus. Good guys, that's a virus. It only reproduces inside the cell of a living organism. So outside the living organism, it cannot survive, right? It cannot reproduce. It can probably survive for a few hours or maybe a couple of hours, probably 24, you know, but it cannot reproduce. It will just be there outside surviving until it dies off, until it then gets a living host if it's still maybe outside the body of a living organism and then it it gets a living host then inside the living host it will reproduce that is why guys with the covid-19 issue we are advised to wash our hands continuously do not touch your face uh, practice social distancing why especially with sanitizing and washing your hands because we go around we touch different surfaces you will touch money. Let's say you're in a taxi, you pass money on to someone else. Or you touched a door handle and you'd find that someone who had COVID touched that door handle and the virus is in the handle. That virus is going to die off on that surface after some time. But if you get there, you touch it. Yeah? 
And then you touch your face. Let's say you touch your eyes or your nose or your mouth. You are giving it entry into your body. And you are a living organism. So as soon as it gets back in your body, it will reproduce now. It will thrive. But outside there on the surface, it wouldn't survive. So you understand the importance of, of um, washing your hands, using sanitizers, and using the correct sanitizer with the correct, correct content or percentages of the alcohol. As you've seen with our example that we did yesterday of the antibiotics in that one question, shows you how effective it is. So remember that about viruses. Then uh, question 1.3.4, microorganisms used in medical biotechnology. Yeah, both of you. Okay, wait. Someone said A and B only. Someone said both A and B. Let's think about this again and let's see if any one of you there will review their answers. Microorganisms, which are used in medical biotechnology. What do what does uh, medical biotechnology do? Which microorganisms? Okay, no one is changing their answer. <laughs> okay, guys, in my medical biotechnology, you would study all different microorganisms, all of them, including viruses, even though they're not indicated here. You would study them because you wanna understand how it works, because you know people get infected by all these different microorganisms. You'd get an infection by fungi, or by bacteria, or you know, it's different all the time. So medical biotechnology, they are studying all of these microorganisms to understand how they function and so that they can be able to find cures for them. So it is both A and B, they study both A and B. You can't just limit it to one field because what if this particular infection is caused by fungi? Then how are you going to find how to cure it? What if this infection is caused by bacteria? You need to study both and all of them. So that's the first step. You need to understand what exactly is the causative agent that has caused this issue. So you see, so we understand and they study all of these ones. Okay, and then next question 1.4. The diagrams below represent the reproductive structures of a plant studied. So these are the reproductive structures of the plant. Provide the labels for, one, for, for, for parts one and two. For parts one and two, okay. There's an answer already. <laughs> Guys, Buche is like on a roll today. Enter and stigma. We have enter and stigma. Enter is number one there, and stigma is number two. What is the most likely pollinating agent for the above flower? Why? Can someone tell me why? Okay, you give me a reason in 1.4.3, ne? It is the wind. It is the most likely. Okay, you, before, both, before I give the, the reason, can you both, Give me your, your explanations. Do you mind? Give me your, giving me your reasons why you said, one of you said wind, the other said big. I want you to tell me why you think that. Sometimes you, it's your explanation that actually gives you the, the, and the mark. So even if let's say the, pe the person marking wasn't very convinced, when you motivate your answer, it does give you a mark.
Ok. <ríe> ¿Sí? ¿Y es? <ríe> so, what is the better answer? The reason why uh, it is most likely that wind will be the pollinating agent is because in this plant here, there are no petals. There's this very large anther. There are feathery stigma or long filaments. So it makes it easy, like if the wind blows over, it can fly. Why is it unlikely that it could be a bird? Chances are, you know, the plants with uh, nice petals, bears are attracted and drawn to those plants and they have structures where they can stand on. So those ones then, they are drawn to the plants because of mainly their petals. This one has no petals, so it relies on the wind as well. And there are no petals to hide off the pollen. Ne? So the wind will just blow easily with no uh, barriers. So it can blow and then the, it can then pollinate other, it can continue with the process of pollination. But if it was uh, beds, it would most likely be beds in plants where you'd find pollen because there they'd be drawn to that pollen. You understand? They'd be drawn, none. It's plants where there is petals, the beds would then be drawn. Even other insects would be drawn to those, to those petals, the nice colors, as they attract these organisms who will be pollinating agents for them. But because based on the structure of this one, you can see it would just uh, pollinate easier with just the... <laughs> Why? <laughs> hey guys, I see. So there is that, yeah, you understand the explanation. And then uh, question 1.4.4. After fertilization, the ovule becomes the seed. Explain what advantage of seeds over spores. You know that, right? After fertilization, the ovule will be the one that becomes the seed. So what is the one advantage of seeds over spores? Uh, <laughs> does that make you mad or, or what? I'm interested to know where, where, where she got it from. So you are waiting for the answer again. Okay, you see now, Butle doesn't want to talk to me anymore. Butle, come on now. Kuzwa, uh, now what is your answer there? What is the advantage of seeds over spores? And you were given this one fact that you know that the ovule, after fertilization, what was the ovule will then become the seed. So before fertilization, it's just the ovule. After fertilization, it becomes the seed. So what is that advantage of seeds over spores? Okay, seeds have more food than spores. Therefore, they survive longer and seeds are dispersed in many ways, whereas spores are dispersed by wind only. So when we see this answer, we see that even when Kuzayo mentioned that it can be birds, it is true because such plants it can happen that it's beds that transmit this because it's, it's, it's not only limited to wind, it's the spores that are limited to being dispersed by wind only. But all these other ones where they are seed plants, then they depend on various other methods except just wind. So like I said, your motivation will determine if you get a mark or not. Fortunately for you in this questions, they were separate, right? So if you were good at, let's say you had gotten an, a, a wrong answer here, they marked you wrong. But based on explanation and your understanding of the work and how you explain, then you could even get marks. You understand what I'm saying? 
And then question 1.5, guys. The diagram below shows the gut in an animal from one of the phyla you have studied. So you see the gut of the animal here. This looks like a cow to me, ne? it's a cow. So this is the cow gut. You see there, it goes through this, through the mouth over there. There's the throat area, esophagus over there, stomach region, then passes out, 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 out. So you see, this is an entry point, this is an exit point. You can even see with the arrows over there. So state whether this, is an, this animal has a blind gut or through gut. You are seeing it, you're seeing the image here. Thank you, it's the through gut, right? This is an opening, this is an exit area. So two openings over there, it's a through gut. It moves, passes through. You can use just that thinking as well. And 1.5.2. Explain one advantage of the gut mentioned in 1.5.1. What is the advantage of a through gut? Okay, the advantage is that each part of the gut uh, becomes differentiated for effective digestion and absorption. And like Mutli saying, digestion is continuous. So what this means is you can be able to eat food even though you haven't excreted, it continues. If you had a blind gut, whereas there's one entry, like it would be closed off over there. Let's say it's one gut, ne? it's closed off over there, way in red. So what this means is you'd, the food will enter here through your mouth. It will digest in your stomach. And then when you need to excrete waste, it would need to come out through the same route. That way then it, it limits, right? It limits the digestion time because you can't eat again until you've excreted. And digestion will take shorter periods of time because now, it, it, you just, maybe you're hungry now, you need, you know, it happens like that. But with through gut, each part of this gut is differentiated. You know the mouth is just for taking in the food, which part passes the food, which part grimes and chimes, which part excretes uh, enzymes, which part is responsible for passing it out and to excrete it. So it's differentiated. Each and every part has its own function. And that makes it effective for digestion as well as for absorption. Also because it plants, the food can spend plenty of time there until it's thoroughly digested. But if it was a, a blind gut, then it would be limited time. And that's limited amount of time for digestion as well. And then question three. Uh, guys, you also need to pay attention to the marker location. Ne? It really, really plays a role to your marks and to how much you would get eventually. So you might say the correct answer, but if you didn't explain in detail, like now, they just want one advantage, so you can list one advantage. Sometimes they say two, and the marker location would be two. If you only list one, you'd probably get just one mark. So be careful, pay attention to those. Like this question here, 1.5.3. It says name two fila, and the answer is two. So if you list only one, you'd only get one mark. You understand? Even here, if your advantage that you explain is short and you don't explain thoroughly, you might not get the full two marks, only one then you need to make sure you salvage and you get as many marks as possible. So don't take lightly the one marks. They are very important. They, they, they'd be, sometimes you'd notice there'd be the difference between your distinction or the difference between your 49% and your 50%. So pay attention to those ones. They are very, very important. This is also like paying attention to your assignments that you do in class. Your class tests, they are very, very important because they all contribute towards your final mark. So you'd find your results and you would have gotten maybe 49% and then you'd remember that one day you didn't write that test or that assignment because you were too tired. And then you, if you had you have written that, you would have passed. So it contributes, remember that. And then the two filler here that have animals with a gut, like the one in the diagram. 
what are, what are those fillers here? Okay, which the anthropoda, anelida, or codata. So you can write any two there. It will be correct. And then 1.5.4, state what is meant by civilization. Civilization, Butler is telling us this is the degree of development of the brain or concentration of the nerve cells into one anterior end. It's basically the development of the head region with a brain and cells. So you see what the development she's talking about. Here, the brain and all the nerve cells were then through various, uh, over time, through evolution, the organism started developing in this way, whereby the, the brain is centered there in the anterior location or the anterior region of the body so that it doesn't interact with all the others. So this one that controls, this is, the, this is the brain there. It controls many, many functions. So it moved there to the head region. And all the other body functions function over there. So it can be the head, is the brain is the computer of the body, right? So all processes are processed over there. And it makes sense that over time, then those regions move up into the anterior region of the body. And you'll notice a lot of organisms are like that, right? They have the head region at the top and then all the rest of the body in the other parts of the body. So this is the concentration of sense organs at the anterior end of the body to form a head region. So thank you so much, Wilke, that was correct. So these are the sense organs there in the, at the body to form the head region. They move there. Okay. That was it for that one. Now we move on to the next paper. Let me, okay, let me open it quickly. Ne? I'll show it just now. We are done with that one paper for now. Not really the paper, just that section for question one. Now we are moving to question two. Where is it now? Okay, there. There is the next question now. Question two. The diagram below represents the human digestive system. You understand the human digestive system. We've just seen the animal digestive system. 2.1.1, give the letters and the names of the parts which a, contain or secrete enzymes which act upon carbohydrates. So you just give me the letters and the names. You see here, read the English, guys. It's saying letters and the names. So you give the letter here. If it's D, you'll say it's D, and you'll write the name of D. If it's B, you'll say it's B, you'll write the name of B. If it's A, you write A and you write the name of A. So let's uh, get going. The letter and the names of the parts which contain or secrete enzymes which act upon carbohydrates. Which part here acts, uh, secretes enzymes? Okay, I've got A, which is the mouth. Now I'm showing you the answer. <laughs> answer for A, B, and C. But anyway, guys, let's look at A. Yes, you only just giving me A being the mouth. So A is the mouth. That is the part involved in secreting enzymes and acting upon carbohydrates. But there are others as well, which secrete enzymes and act upon carbohydrates. Look at this question, it's going for four marks. So the mouth alone or the saliva glands alone, that's at, both of them would really pass. Both answers that you're giving out would really pass. And the answer, I would mark it, I would mark both of them correct. The other one is what? A is the mouth. 
small intestines as well, right? Small intestines as well as small intestines are F over there. So A, which is the mouth, F, it's the first small intestine. And then the pancreas, who can show me the pancreas? What letter is the pancreas over there? It also secretes enzymes, which will act upon the carbohydrates. Pancreas is E over there, just below the stomach. That is your pancreas. It also secretes some enzymatic juices for the chemical digestion. Yeah? And it's also involved in homeostatic control, whereby it regulates the sugar levels in the body. And then B, which one secretes hydrochloric acid? Hydrochloric acid is secreted by what? Question B. That is the stomach, guys. And then C, stomach is number. Show me the stomach. What number is the stomach over there? Just tell me the letter of the stomach. And then tell me the letter of the large intestine, which is the one that is made up of the caesum, colon, and rectum. Stomach is D, yes. Stomach is D. And large intestine is that contains the caesum, colon, and rectum. And the large intestine, you can even see with the sizes, C. Thank you, Kuzayo. Okay, and then question 2.1.2. State two functions of the liquid stored in part B. State the two functions of the liquid stored in part B. What is part B? Tell me, give me one. Give me the what? The name of part B, or give me the functions of of that liquid that is stored in part B. Do you even know what liquid is stored in part B? It emulsifies fats and neutralizes acidic chyme from the stomach. What is that liquid that I'm talking about there? What is that liquid there? I'm waiting for your aunt. What is the name of the liquid stored in B? In the previous question. It is bile, guys. This liquid stored in B there is bile. It is the one that is responsible for emulsifying fats and also neutralizing acidic time. And then I've given the two functions, right? Emulsifying fat and neutralizing acidic chyme. So it's two. So we, are, we complied with the correct uh, uh, rule. Question 2.1.3. Extractural adaptations of a villus found in part F. Part F is the small intestine, part F. I think one of them I always keep on emphasizing. 11. This is similar to that one we learned. We've been learning this snake, guys. It's 
It has a single leg and they have mitochondria. So you see, it is the cellular structure similar to what? To which other organ did we study? That has epithelial cells which allow for easy diffusion and also has mitochondria to help with active transportation in terms of absorption. In which system and in which organ? We studied this uh, very recently. Which other system and organ has these same uh, structural adaptations? How oh, guys, were you not? And we're not done with it really, we just packed it for the assessment stage. What is that one? Remember when we were doing the excretory system, uh, particularly the urinary system, the kidneys, and in the nephron there, there are structural adaptations, especially of those tubules whereby they have epithelial cells which allow for easy diffusion in that process of reabsorption. You remember that? They also have the mitochondria which will allow for active transportation. You remember that? when we studied the nephron and the urine involved also in the process of extension. Yes, Kuzayo, it is the kidneys, thank you. Bacterial cells allowing for easy diffusion as well as the mitochondria. So you see our bodies function in a similar way. It might be different processes, but it's quite similar. And especially now in the digestive system, when it gets to the intestine, Yes, the food is being digested, but it's also being prepared for excretion. These processes are similar. The same way you need the reabsorption. And then moving on to question 2.1.4. is regarded as both endocrine and exocrine. What is an E? I told you, gland E. Why is it regarded as endocrine and also as exocrine? So what do you think of the endocrine and exocrine? It, this is an endocrine. This is into the, the main characteristics. Transportation of the secretion has in the endocrine, it is dilated. It secretes those particular hormones. It happens inside. So it will be transported through jets. So it will be secreted, like you see here, out of the rest of the insulin and glucagon directly in the blood. Is that clear? That's the main difference. The main feature is we need to understand. Exocrine transports through the duct, but endocrine directly in the blood. 
had. And then, okay, guys, I'm quickly checking. I hear I'm glitching, so I'm not sure what's up. Okay, I hope it's better now. I want us to finish this one quickly. I'm really sorry about that. And then question 2.1.5. Describe how the hormones secreted by the pancreas regulates the blood glucose level. Change to a different internet connection. I hope now we can get to finish this part. So I was trying to explain, and I'm, I sincerely apologize for that, guys. I was trying to explain here that they are asking about the hormone, particularly the one that is secreted when glucose levels drop. So remember I mentioned you have both insulin and glucagon. Insulin is secreted when the glucose levels are high. When glucose levels are, are up, then insulin is secreted to reduce the glucose levels. But when glucose levels are below normal, then glucagon is the hormone that is released. This one will then stimulate the conversion of glycogen to glucose in the liver or the muscles, which is then released into the bloodstream and then the glucose levels will be back to normal. So you understand that? When glucose levels are high, you take insulin. That's why people who have uh, conditions of, of, of diabetes because high, two very high glucose levels would result in diabetes, right? And if there are, process, there are problems in the processes that regulate glucose in your body, then you might develop uh, diabetes. So they might even get so extreme that they would need to take insulin shots to lower the sugar levels or the glucose levels. But if your glucose levels are too low, it is glucagon that is secreted by the pancreas. So that what happens, it will be involved in the conversion of glycogen to glucose to bring up the glucose levels back to normal. I hope that is clear. Know the difference between those two hormones over there. And then I think now we'll be able to finish this partner. We'll move through quickly. It's just one, one mark. Okay, yes. 2.2, the diagram below represents an organism in one of the phyla of the kingdom Animalia. This is a locust. 2.2.1, identify the phylum to which the locust belongs. What is the phylum which this locust belongs? Arthropoda. Question 2.2.2, state whether the locust, the locust is diploblastic or triploblastic. It is triplo. Plastic. It has three layers, right? Ecto, endo, mesoderm. Then 2.2.3, name the type of skeleton found in a locust. What type of skeleton is found here? Locust, arthropoda, what types of skeletons do you find? Exoskeletons. The difference between them and us human beings and other uh, mammals we know is that we have an endoskeleton. Their skeleton is outside providing a shield for their bodies. Ours are inside the body providing us with the structure and support. 2.2.4 state two disadvantages of the type of skeleton mentioned in 2.2.3 and explain how the locust overcomes each of these disadvantages. So we need to take two disadvantages of the exoskeleton. So you see these questions are related. If you had answered endoskeleton, then it's obvious you would get question four wrong. <laughs> so please pay attention to your answers. So the disadvantage of this exoskeleton is the body surface is impermeable. So there are no specialized gas exchange openings present. Remember when we started gas exchange? We need the, the surface organs to be permeable enough to allow the diffusion of gases. And then question point two is, it cannot stretch to accommodate growth of the body, which will make diffusion inadequate for the transport of food, gases, and excretory waste. That's why these organisms with exoskeleton only grow to a specific size. Like they, they don't usually get that big. 
it's basically it's also because of that structure which is the exoskeleton for for these ones you'll each get a mark ne? you'll get a mark for that one and then question uh how would and explain how the low cost overcomes each of these disadvantages how does the low cost overcome these disadvantages that will be your take home homework since we are out of time now it's 12 46 okay guys please do the assessment please 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 i gave you my email address i let me type it quickly for you before we are cut off and I'm, i apologize sincerely once again for the connection problems you can please email it to me here. There is my email address. I've sent it to you guys. So we'll see each other tomorrow when we mark the assessment. Or oh, for those who finish today, email it to me and I'll start marking right away. Thank you so much. Bye and all the best. Good luck. Bye.